My name is Julie Hunter. Everyone calls me Hunter or Glitterotica. Um, I am the owner of Austin's first and only roller derby shop. Am I supposed to look at you or the camera? Sorry. Not me. Okay. No, that's fine. I was like, oh. So I formed Medusa Skates in 2011, April 2011. I actually started it on my fireplace and then it moved to my linen closet and to the garage and then to the store. So the store opened in August 2012. So I've been open a little over a year. Before that, I was a landscape architect for a little over seven years and um, worked for the city of Round Rock as a parks designer. I think I knew in year two out of college that landscape architecture was not what I thought it was gonna be. I learned I like to be, uh, to talk to people a lot more um, than sitting in the desk. I think just that desk was killing me. I was really, really depressed um, pretty much the whole time. Even with good projects, it would only like make it a little bit better. And once I started Medusa, um, I, only, I started it just as a side thing. So just to, I don't know, because I was bored at work. So I kind of did it while I was at work and then realized that I liked it a lot, opened the garage store and I was open half days on Fridays. And the more it grew, the more I was like, this is, this is what I look forward to all week. As Friday afternoons when I open the garage and I have beer and people try on skates and we talk about Derby and what's the best products. And that's how I figured it out. I was very, very nervous and, and really just, going over and over in my mind for a solid two months. And it was probably the most depressed I'd ever been, just trying to figure out would I be an idiot to do this. And uh, then I secured the loan and just, can I cuss? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm like, I cuss a lot. And I just said, fuck it. I have to like, I have to try this. I know if I don't try this, I'm going to sit in this desk forever. I may change jobs in the landscape architecture career, but I'm not, it's not gonna be that much different. And I needed something different now. Like it was, it was, I was pretty much at just my, the end. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I'm like 32 and ah, uh, freaked out. But so just decided to do it and put my notice in at work. I gave them a month notice and they were all really excited for me, which was surprising. And, my parents were really supportive, my friends were supportive, and then people I didn't know were actually not supportive. They were like, are you crazy? So I was like, yeah, I am crazy. <laughs> my dad really, really inspired me to do this. Um, he's uh, always been a little side entrepreneur. He's always had little businesses on the side. He was a professor for 30 years, but there was always something going on at our house. So he was pretty supportive and excited about it. I think he definitely saw a huge risk and I, I don't think he necessarily thought it was gonna make it, but he was supportive, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> this is, I've definitely thought about that. Um, you know, sometimes I have bad days and I'm like, what would you really rather do? Like if you won the lottery, would you still do this? I would actually still do this right now. I'm gonna, I don't know if this will be the same thing in 15 years, but for right now, this is, this is badass. Like, I get up when I'm ready. I, I'm my own boss. I come here. I have awesome customers. People are really genuinely kind to me. And I get to help people. And I, they, I get to see people really excited. When somebody buys a pair, of skate, a pair of skates, it's almost like I got a new pair of skates. I'm like, yeah. You know, just they're so happy about it. So and, and finding the right thing. So I just, it's just really satisfying. And I just don't see what else I could do. I wasn't even, I knew I needed to do something other than landscape architecture, but I had no freaking clue, couldn't think of anything. I just knew that was the one thing I didn't want to do. My biggest fear is this fails and I have to go back to that career because it was stable. It, you know, it's not a super high paying job, but it pays more than this. <laughs> but that, I can't imagine the first day at work. <laughs> I'd be so depressed. So I think I would stick with this. I think if I won the lottery or something like that, though, I would hire somebody. <laughs> right now I run this by myself and it's a lot of work. It's mine, yeah. Every day I come in and every, every once in a while I'll be like, 
I don't want to go to work. And I'm like, you shut the fuck up. Like, go to work. You have a, a badass job that you created for yourself. This is as good as my life's going to get, I think. I don't know how I could have a better job. So I talk to a lot of people that are so unhappy with their jobs. And it is hard because you don't know. If you don't know what to do, what do you? how do you switch it? And I don't, I don't know the answer to that. You just keep trying things and you can't stay. Like, that's the biggest regret I have is just staying so long in a job that I was really unhappy with. Like it's, it's what you do most of the time. You wouldn't stay in a relationship that you fucking hated. So why do you stay in this job that you're miserable with? Um, I mean, I don't think you can't just be like, well, fuck it. I'm going to go up in a gas station. I have no funding and no expertise and I've got no counseling. You still have to, you take a calculated risk. I tracked all of the sales for a year and a half. I had charts, I printed out and it was, you know, everything. I researched other stores. I had binders of every other store printouts that I would do at work when people weren't looking of what their store looked like, what they stock, what it's rated. Like I worked my ass off, but I made it happen. So I just, I feel bad for people that don't just try something else. It may not work, but you got to try something else if your job sucks. Sorry, that's mine. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Got excited.